Good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office on this Monday morning. It's the first day of September 2025. It's also Labor Day. Labor Day. Hope you're having a good three-day weekend. And on this Monday morning, uh, I've got a lot to go through. A few different topics we're going to get to here this morning. So since it's Labor Day and uh, perhaps you don't have to run off to the office, sit back, pour a cup of coffee, and we're going to get into a few things this morning. The first thing we're getting into is uh, on Friday, Friday afternoon, I was out running errands, had the radio on, local news came on, and a little blurb said, um, for this winter, there's going to be a La Nina. And kind of said something about it's going to be a cold winter, you know, and then they moved on. So perhaps you heard there's going to be a La Nina. Well, what does that mean? Um, I'll give you the, the short answer. It doesn't really mean anything for Northern California. So let's go to uh, this page. This is actually from the Climate Prediction Center, CPC. Um, they put this out. Uh, so they put this out on the 25th, the Climate Prediction Center, NCEP, ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation. And the, the, so there's a whole um, a whole page here that you can, you can find. So um, right now it says El, uh, the El Nino neutral is most likely through late um, Northern Hemisphere summer. So right now. Um, thereafter, a brief period of La Nina conditions is favored in the fall and early winter of 25-26 before returning to and so neutral. All right. Let's, I'm going to scroll down a few pages here. There's a lot going on here. This is how it's looked over the uh, course of a, a while. And this is how it um, has looked over from the 27th of July to the 23rd of August. And what you're looking at here is uh, there's Baja, here's Mexico, uh, Central America. And then, so you're looking out here, and this is the area that is slightly cooler than average. You can see it's highlighted by the blue. And you can see it here on a slightly different scale. And let's scroll down a little bit more. They go by weekly departures. This is how it uh, has looked since 2000, warm conditions, cool conditions. So we have that typical cycle. We go through warm periods and cool periods. And right now we, we saw the, the spike into the cool period um, and, then, and then on down. Anyway, let's keep going down here uh, as we get to the, the forecast. There's lots of variability. They, this is the very complete report that they put out. And I'm going to keep scrolling down. Let's see the definitions. Okay, here's the def here's here's your evolution since 1950. And so you can see the warm conditions. We've had some very warm um, El Ninos, and we've had some pretty steep La Ninas, like in here, big El Nino, little La Nina. And so what are they expecting this year? Well, there's also a chart of some previous ones. So what they're expecting is a very weak La Nina as forecast here. So what you're looking at here is uh, the forecast and observed from the various models. And so over here you see 0.5. It has to be above 0.5 for, I think it's three consecutive months um, to be uh, El Nino, La Nina in the, in the um, and so as you can see, some are, are on the positive, some are in the negative down here, which is La Nina. And so as you can see, it's nothing too extreme. You don't have it up here one or two either direction. And if I go back up to this, you can see that, yeah, there's minus one up to four, minus three. So we're not talking about a big bump. We're talking about maybe a very weak La Nina. Okay, so what does that mean if we have a weak La Nina? Um, and, you know, maybe you're having a backyard barbecue uh, this, uh, you know, today, and if, some, if this comes up. If you're, uh, you know, <laughs> one of those groups where chat turns to weather and somebody says, oh, there's going to be a La Nina. Well, we can just look at, at some of the past years here. And these blue uh, numbers here indicate when there was a La Nina and the reds were when there's an El Nino. Well, I'll tell you. Um... 
La Nina for Northern California means absolutely nothing because there is extreme variability. We had a La Nina in 2021, and that year turned out to be really, really dry. Um, we also had one in 2010, 2011, and that turned out to be wet. We also had one in 95, 96, that turned out to be wet. So you, uh, when you look at La Nina patterns uh, for Northern California from the past, you have everything from very dry to very wet, and then, of course, a lot of years in between. So the bottom line is, if somebody says, oh, there's a La Nina this winter, and this means blah, for, and again, I'm talking about Northern California, I'm talking about for the Sierra, I'm talking about for areas from, let's say, Fresno to the north, um, and so including Central California. It may mean more for the Pacific Northwest, it may mean more for areas like Los Angeles and Arizona, but for areas, let's say, in the areas that I've talked about in Northern California, it really doesn't mean anything because what we have seen in the past is just extreme variability. So it could mean anything in terms of our rain and snow season. So there you go. Okay, the other thing that's making uh, headlines today is, is there gonna be the Aurora tonight? So there was a, uh, a big ejection from the, uh, from the sun and it's heading our way. And it is uh, expected to be here actually this afternoon, peaking around uh, one o'clock this afternoon, our time. And then some of, the, uh, some of that energy would still be coming our way tonight. So this is tonight's Aurora forecast. And this comes also from, uh, from NOAA, the Space Weather Prediction Center. And, and this is what they show in terms of where the Aurora will be visible tonight. However, I have seen this forecast uh, both underestimate and overestimate. Uh, so what they're saying is that tonight, they're, they're say right here says KP6 on a scale of zero to nine. Um, so it's gonna be pretty good. Um, so this may be a little bit underdone. However, for let's say areas around Northern California, I wouldn't be surprised if areas up towards Shasta start to see some of that tonight. And if you're in dark areas on the eastern side of the Sierra, you also might be able to see that. But if you're, let's say, in Sacramento or Stockton or Fairfield, and you go outside tonight and you're looking for the Aurora, uh, you probably will not see it because, well, you've got a lot of light competing, and it would just kind of be a glow out on the horizon, on the northern horizon. Um, you know, the, the true Aurora where you just kind of see the dancing sort of uh, lights overhead, waves overhead. Um, you know, that's going to be in areas that are more like in here. But so that's the Aurora forecast tonight. So, um, yeah, I think that, that it does look as though that many areas may see it. However, a lot of areas probably won't. All right. Now let's get to today's weather. We have some marine layer on the coast. However, it's still going to be another pretty warm day. We'll likely see valley temperatures up around 100 degrees. And there is still smoke coming off the Garnet Fire, which is now over 20,000 acres and continues to burn. I looked at the, the progress report and yeah, they're, they've been doing some, uh, some control burns, if you will, burning off some fuels to try to hem it in, especially on the west side, but it continues to be pretty active on the north side. And you can see even in the morning light, the smoke streaming up into the Sierra, perhaps all the way getting into the Tahoe Basin, and again, this is before the sun comes up. I'm recording pretty early this morning. And we also have some moisture coming into Arizona, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, the marine layer is there, but boy, it has been pretty warm the last couple of days. Let me show you how uh, the month of August ended up in Sacramento. On Saturday and Sunday, 101 both days after overnight lows around 60. And we're also pretty warm this morning. And this afternoon will also likely end up around that 101, 102 range, making it, yes, another heat wave. So August ended up with, let's see, three, seven, eight, nine days over 100. And we had come into the month of August with only four for the entire year. So now we're up to, let's see, nine plus four, that means 13 days. We're getting closer to average for a number of days over 100. And most likely add still another couple more. However, what I find interesting about the summer so far is 
103 is the hottest it has been this summer. We haven't seen any 105s, 108s, 110s, at least not in Sacramento at Executive Airport, which is nice. So here's what's going on. We still have this bit of ridging going on, low up in here, little wave in here, which is gonna help things out starting tomorrow. Tomorrow we start getting more of the onshore breeze back, which will bring temperatures down and help to nudge this high a little bit farther to the east. So this is nice. Get into the day on Tuesday, but that also may trigger some showers that I'll show you here in a second. As we go through the middle part of the week, looks as though that trough moves out just temporarily, maybe a bit of a bump with temperatures on Thursday before we see more troughing come our way into Friday and the weekend. And this is back to our very comfortable weather. So next weekend, I know for many of you still on a three-day weekend right now, you're like, wow, looking ahead to next weekend. Yeah, next weekend right now looks pretty comfortable. This is a good pattern for us. This is more or less, well, this is a bit of a trough out in here. Nice onshore flow, cooler than average temperatures. And we just kind of keep that troughing around as we get into fantasy land. We'll see how that works out. So let me back up to the beginning. You see with the big ridge here, this is good news for California that that ridge is going to get pinched a little bit farther to the east and help to moderate our temperatures as we go through the middle part of this week. So what about showers? Let's take a look at the HRRR. And so we'll go from the HRRR to the high resolution NAM out to the GFS. And where we are, this is, uh, today looks pretty quiet. So as you can see, it doesn't look like we'll see anything in the way of showers, thunderstorms today. But as we get into the day tomorrow, Look at this activity here, and this is in the morning. This is, uh, this is around four o'clock in the morning, starting to see some moisture come up. And this is around eight o'clock in the morning. Look at that. Maybe some elevated convection once again as that goes by. And then into the afternoon on Tuesday, a lot of activity once again on the east side of the Sierra. So remember, on Tuesday, we have that little low digging here off the coast. It will tap into a little bit of moisture coming up, and that's what we're looking at here. So Tuesday, a cooler day, more of a breeze, maybe a morning shower, but certainly morning clouds, and then afternoon showers in the Sierra. That's around 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have more monsoon moisture in Southern California. And that's as far out as the NAM, I should say the, uh, the HRRR goes, and that's through early Wednesday morning. The high resolution NAM goes a little bit farther out. Let me back it up because it also shows that activity early Tuesday morning right here, and then increasing into the afternoon in the Sierra. And then on Wednesday, we see another surge of moisture, which will likely feed afternoon showers in the Sierra here, and then perhaps more showers in Southern California. So we're gonna see a bit more monsoon activity over the next couple of days, but not today. Now let's go way out in time and we'll look at the GFS. So this doesn't have the same sort of resolution. It, the precipitation will look more blobby, if you will, because it just doesn't have the same resolution. But it also shows that activity on Tuesday morning and then Tuesday afternoon. On Wednesday, Shows the activity farther to the east and to here. Now we're getting into, this is Friday afternoon. It shows a lot of activity. We have the deeper trough out in here. And then that means out ahead of it, we have probably tapping into some monsoon moisture, which means really good activity on the east side of the Sierra and through Nevada. And then as we get into that deeper trough, I just wanted to look at this to see because we have, we have a pretty deep trough, cooler air here, thicknesses down to, well, 18.5. And yeah, eventually maybe some mountain showers as we get that cooler air, but really not seeing anything widespread that, let's go back to this. And let me go out to that time frame. So what I was looking at is this time. I mean, that's a nice little low. If this was winter time, we'd be talking about, oh, rain and snow and Sierra, you know, wind and all that sort of thing. But at this time of year, this sort of thing just brings us some cooler air and uh, limited amounts of moisture. But, you know, that changes as we get into winter. Maybe a, you know, preview 
of coming attractions. I think that's everything I've got for you on this Monday morning. So we talked about La Nina. And again, remember, in terms of you know what it means for our winter season, it really doesn't mean much. Uh, talked about the Aurora tonight. Uh, so if you hear something about that for, you know, for Northern California, probably not. Uh, but if you're in a re more remote area farther to the north or to the east, you may have a chance of seeing it tonight. Uh, let's see, talked about the fact that it's going to be warm, but tomorrow we start the cooling trend. Talked about thunderstorms. I think that's everything I've got for you this morning. All right. Well, make it a great day. Enjoy your Labor Day. I'll talk with you later.